Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Gangwar and today we'll be studying binomial lecture 5. So this is the last lecture of binomial and we'll be talking about negative and fractional indices over here. And also we'll be talking about multinomial theorem. So let us start with the negative indices. And before starting, let's build up certain, uh, see these expansions to, fi to finally derive the formulas for negative indices and fractional indices. So S equals to 1 plus X plus X square plus X cube plus X4 till infinity for mod x less than one. We know that this is a GP and summation of GP is one upon one minus x. Now I'll try to write this in a different format. I'll write this as one minus x is per minus one. Similarly, if I try to write an AGP, that would be one plus two x plus three x square plus four x cube till infinity. Again, modulus x less than one. Now I can write this as one upon one minus x square. We actually derived it that this comes out to be one upon one minus x whole square. Again, I can write this in the format one minus X raised power minus two. So basically what I have done is I have tried to rewrite this expansion series in terms of this binomial series, but with a negative index, but a thought can come to my mind that uh, this is possible only for a few cases. This might be possible only for a few cases, but might not be very generic. So let's try to derive a generic formula, how to arrive at these particular expansion series for these kind of conditions. Okay. I'll again go back to one plus x is per n. So that is c0 plus c1x plus c2x square plus c3x cube plus c4x4 till cn x is per n, right? Now let's try to write this in a different format. c0 is nothing but nc0. So nc0 is nothing but one. c1 is nc1. So that is nx. So c2 is n times n minus one divided by two factorial times x square plus C3, C3 over here. C3 is n times n minus one times n minus two divided by three factorial multiplied by x cube and so on, right? So basically what I've done is I have written C, NC3 as this, NC2 as this, NC1 as this, and C0 as this one, right? Now this is our one plus x raised power n. Now what if I uh, replace x with minus x over here? I'll be getting one minus x raised power n and replace n with minus one. So I'll be getting one plus minus one times minus X plus this would become minus one minus one minus one times minus X whole square divided by two factorial. And this would become minus one, my minus one minus one and minus one minus two times minus X whole cube divided by three factorial and so on. So I'll be getting one and plus X over, over here, right? And plus, this minus and this minus would become positive and this becomes two. This gets canceled out. So this becomes X square. Now we have four negative signs over here. One, two, three and four from here. So again, it will become positive and we have three dot two dot one. So three factorial gets canceled out. It becomes X cube. Now I can see that it's becoming this series only, right? One plus X plus X square plus X cube plus X raised for four till n in a term because we have defined for n terms only. Now if I make that as infinity, in that case, we can again reach towards infinity. So basically my understanding came that I can use the same formula, but in a different format, even for the negative indices. And that would also work. Similarly, I can extrapolate that the same formula would work again for the uh, fraction indices, but we don't have to write in this format because we cannot write, define NCR for negative index. So basically I have to write this in factorial format and then use that factorial format for fraction values of n and or for negative values of n that can make use. We cannot use this for the negative or fraction, but we can definitely use this one for the negative and fraction and that would work. And we have checked that you can also uh, use the value of X equals to minus two or uh, X equals to X square. Then also it would work perfectly fine. Right. But there is one problem over here, over here in this one, we derived only for such a condition. So again, if we are using the negative index or the fraction index, we'll always have to consider mod X less than equals to one and mod X doesn't mean just the X value. Let's say if we have one minus two X raised power, let's say uh, minus two over here. In that case, minus in that, in that case, two X mod should be less than one. Doesn't mean just X. X means anything over here that should be modulus of that should be less than one, right? So this condition has to be followed. If you have to use this kind of expression for any kind of binomial expansion, right? Now let us talk, let us generalize it for the fraction indices as well. So one plus X raised power N equals to one plus N X plus N times N minus one 
divided by 2 factorial x square plus n n minus 1 n minus 2 x cube divided by 3 factorial till the infinity for mod x less than equals to 1. So this is the generic formula for both fractional as well as negative indices. right? And for positive, we already know that. Now let's try to find out a simpler form, simpler version for specifically negative indices, negative integral indices. So let us derive for 1 minus x is for minus n where n belongs to natural numbers. So basically this is a negative index and we have 1 minus x over here. It's not for 1 plus x raised power minus n. We are specifically deriving for 1 minus x raised power minus n, right? So if I try to write it in generic format, it would become 1 plus minus s n minus x plus minus n minus n times my minus n minus 1 divided by 2 factorial minus x whole square plus minus n minus n minus 1 minus n minus 2 divided by 3 factorial minus x whole cube till the end. Now we'll be getting 1 plus nx plus n n plus 1 by 2 factorial x square plus n n plus 1 n plus 2 x cube divided by 3 factorial and so on, right? So basically, I can write this as I can write this as nc0 plus I can write this as nc1 plus I can write this as n plus 1 c2. This is x over here. This is x square over here, right? Plus this is n plus 2 c3 x cube till, till the end, right? So basically I can generalize it if we have the second term basically if we, if we have two power power basically x square over here then we have the one minus term over here n plus one if we have three over here in the power then we have n plus two over here n plus two c3 so the general term shows that if we, if they want to ask you uh, coefficient of x raised power n then that would be n plus n minus one cn so this is how you have to take the generalization for only this kind of case, 1 minus x is power minus n, where n belongs to natural numbers, right? Now let us talk about binomial approximation. So again, we'll start with 1 plus x raised power n equals to 1 plus nx plus n, n minus 1 by 2 factorial x square plus n, n minus 1, n minus 2 divided by 3 factorial x cube till the end, right? Now let's take x equals to 0 0.001 and if I try to find out the value of x square, I'll be getting 0 0.000001, right? I can see that there is a very less significance of this number in the life of this number. If I add both of them, I'll be, there is no significant change in this number, in the value of this number, right? So similar concept can be used over here. If x is tending to zero, in such a case, we can ignore the higher order numbers and we can just write this as one plus x raised power n equals to one plus nx. But this is only and only possible when x is tending to 0. x means anything over here. If it's written 1 plus 2x raised power n, that means 2x is tending to 0. It shouldn't be like that. Okay, we just making x is tending to 0 and then we are done with the case. That's not the case over here. And also, 1 should be here. It shouldn't be like 2 plus x raised power n. Then we can write it as 2 plus nx. It's not possible because we are defining it for 1 plus x only. In that case, we'll have to take 2 raised power n as common out of the bracket and then we can use 1 plus x by 2 raised power n and then we can use the binomial approximation. So you have to remember that this any term over here should be tending to 0 and over here it should be 1 only. Only in that case we can use this kind of approximation. Now let's look at one example. The coefficient of x raised power 100 in 5 minus 4x divided by 1 minus x whole square is. So basically, we have to use the concept of 1 minus x raised power minus n in over here. How? So this would become 5 minus 4x times 1 minus x raised power minus 2. So this is how it becomes, right? So I can write it further as 5 times 1 minus x raised power minus 2 minus 4x times 1 minus x raised power minus 2. So basically, we have to find out the coefficient of x raised power 100 over here. And we have to find out the coefficient of x raised power 99 over here and then add them because we have x over here additional, right? So based on our generalization, we studied that if we want to find out the coefficient of x raised power 100, what we'll be getting that that would be n over here that is 2, 2 plus the one which is which has been asked 100 minus 1, c 100, right? 
so this is the one multiplied by 5 minus 4 times x is already there so the coefficient of x is for 99 is minus 4 times 2 plus 99 minus 1 c 99 this is the one type now this would become 5 times 101 c 100 minus 4 times 100 c 99 so this is nothing but this is nothing but 101 only so 505 minus and this is nothing but 100 only 400 so this would give me 105 as the answer this is the correct answer now let us talk about the multinomial theorem and this is the last topic of today's lecture end of the binomial series so let's start with the generalization x is par x plus y is par n equals to and we we'll write the general term that would be ncr dot x is par n minus r dot y is par r right now i can further write it as n factorial divided by r factorial n minus r factorial multiplied by x is par n minus r dot y is par r now one thing i can see over here whatever the power is over here we have divided in factorial by that whatever the power over here we we have divided the in factorial by that factorial right so i can further write it as n factorial divided by let's say let's call it as r factorial and let's call it as capital r factorial so this would become x is par capital r y is par r or you can write it as a and b over here and this would become a factorial and this would become b factorial right so this is how we can generalize it right now we can use this same extrapolation for the general format of multinomial theorem so let's say we have been asked for x plus y plus z raised power n then we can use the same kind of generalization what we'll be doing we'll be writing n factorial divided by a factorial b factorial c factorial multiplied by x raised power a dot y raised power b dot c raised power c sorry z raised power c right and a plus b plus c equals to n because over here it was n minus r plus r so basically this power has been divided everywhere in terms so over here we have three terms so we have divided the power in three terms a plus b plus c equals to n and dividing the factorial of individual terms uh, in the denominator right so this is our multinomial theorem and that's the only thing we have to study in multinomial theorem and then we can directly jump on to solving questions so let's see one example find the coefficient of a raised to power 5 dot b raised to power 4 dot c raised to power 7 in the expansion of bc plus ca plus ab raised to power 8 so we have bc plus ca plus ab raised to power 8 now we can write the general term as 8 factorial divided by let's say i'm calling as x y z powers over here so x raised to power x factorial dot y factorial dot z factorial multiplied by bc raised to power x dot ca raised to power y dot ab raised to power z right now the first thing to understand is over here is x plus y plus z equals to 8 now it's been given that the term over here is a raised to power 5 dot b raised to power 4 dot c raised to power 7 so let's try to write in the in this kind of format so basically we have b term over here and b term over here so let's try to write that in the format right so this term would become b raised to power x and from here i'll be getting b raised to power z so basically i'll be getting x plus z and similarly over here c raised to power x is there and uh, we have c raised to power y over here so we'll be getting dot C raised to power x plus y, and also we have a term over here and a term over here. A has y plus z, so a raised to power y plus z. Now, with the given condition, y plus z, y plus z should be five, and x plus z should be four, and uh, x plus y should be seven. Now, what we can do? We can subtract all of them from here and find out the value of x, y, and z. So Z would come out to be one, and from here y x would come out to be three, and uh, y would come out to be four, right? So the coefficient would be eight factorial divided by three factorial, four factorial, and one factorial. So this is the value of our coefficient. So today's lecture was still here only, and this marks the end of binomial series. And from tomorrow onwards, we'll be starting with PNC. So let's meet tomorrow. Thanks for watching.